Okay. Other thing that I want to talk about, this is something, again, this is a new topic of multiplicity. Multiplicity is just whatever the exponent is on that particular root or x-intercept. Um, so it's just the exponent that's right on here. So right here, we have a zero of one. That would make that little uh, binomial into a zero. So the zero is one and it has a multiplicity of two. So that zero in some sense shows up two times because it has an exponent of two on there. Think about it, it's like an x minus one and another x minus one. Next, we've got that next polynomial, binomial, is negative three fifths, would make that second one, make this into zero. So this one has a multiplicity of seven. Um, whoop, mult. I just write mult. It has a multiplicity of seven because there's an exponent of seven right there. That's all multiplicity is. Just kind of like degree is the biggest exponent. Multiplicity is the exponent that is on a zero. Finally, uh, we've got this little binomial, x plus 5. So we have a 0 at negative 5. You can write that it's mult 1. But if it has a multiplicity of 1, we usually don't write it. So it's this isn't needed. You can write it if you want. But if you don't write any sort of multiplicity, we assume that it's 1. So if you just say negative five when you're listing zeros, I'm like, oh, okay, you just use that one time. But if you said I have a one with a multiplicity of two, oh, that zero shows up twice. Cool. Kind of like you don't write an exponent of one, so you don't mention a multiplicity of one. A couple more zeros. So this is a zero that is zero. It's multiplicity of three. Here we have a zero, negative four, multiplicity of two. And then finally right here, we have one, the multiplicity of seven. That's easy. So multiplicity, it's just the exponent that is on a particular zero. Now we can do some cool things with these. So we have a polynomial of degree seven, whose zeros are negative two, multiplicity of two, zero with a multiplicity of three, and four, with a multiplicity of one. So I wanna turn those, those are zeros right now, I wanna turn those into factors so I can write my polynomial. So I'm gonna say p of x equals, um, now I'm gonna keep it blue, I need the opposite of it. So to turn a zero into a factor, I have to do the opposite of my zero. And it has a multiplicity of two. So that's telling me that there's an exponent of two on there. Next, we have zero with a multiplicity of three. So I could do x minus zero, but that seems a little silly. I'm just going to write an x. Uh, and that's a three. Because it's got a multiplicity of three, so it should have an exponent of three. And then finally, we have four. So I'm going to do the opposite, x minus 1. And it had would have an exponent of 1, but, you know, you don't write an exponent of 1. So all of these multiplied together should get me a polynomial of degree 7. And you can tell it's degree 7 because you could, like, imagine what would happen if you multiplied these together. This would make an x to the 4. That would have an x squared. So let's see, that's uh, 4, 5, 6. Did I mess up somewhere? Shoot, why does this have a degree of, this should be a degree of six. The directions are messed up. This should be a degree of six. My bad. Minor typo. So um, what we want to do now, I'm going to do something a little bit bonus. I'm going to graph this thing. Because these, I'm going to show you why these, these multiplicity things are cool. And why we care about them. Whoop, whoop. So if I wanted to graph this thing, I know I have zeros. Those zeros are the same thing as x-intercepts. So I know I'm going to have an x-intercept over here at negative 2. I know I'm going to have an x-intercept here at 3. And I know I'm going to have an x-intercept over here at 4. 
I said three, but I think I meant zero. Okay. So those are going to be my zeros. So I know the, the, the function is going to touch the x-axis at those points. Now here's what gets really wild. I drew my graph. I, I put this into my graphing calculator. And then here's what came out. I want to watch you watch me draw this for a minute. I looked right there and it did this. And then I looked at this next spot and it was kind of doing this. And then I looked at my last spot and it was kind of doing this. But then all of these were connected. And then these, then these just kind of like carried on for forever. Huh. That looks interesting. That's an interesting looking graph. But how does that relate to multiplicity? Well, if I think about degrees, if I think about a linear, a linear is just a straight line, right? It would just kind of go whoop. Quite similar, this whoop is quite similar to what that thing's doing. Hmm, multiplicity of one. Over here at that x plus two, a quadratic, an x squared, would look like this. Hmm, this looks a lot like that. Just bounces right off the axis. Sure, it's not at the origin anymore. What about x cubed, a cubic? Well, that would look like that one where it's kind of got that goofy little flat spot. Ooh, look, look at this thing. It kind of comes down, has a little flat spot, and then it keeps going. Cool. Multiplicities tells us not only, so we know where it's crossing based on the zeros. Multiplicities tells us how is our graph going to behave when we hit the axis are we going to bounce off it are we going to shoot right through it or are we going to kind of flatten out but still go through to kind of wrap up for today here's kind of like an overall like how this all goes together so linears will shoot straight through quadratics will bounce off and then cubics will go through. Overall, you can kind of actually see a linear shape inside of a cubic because this pattern continues with an odd and even pattern that even multiplicities will bounce and odds will shoot straight through kind of behaving like a linear. That's kind of why I've got this dotted red line shooting through here. Also, our leading coefficient, that's a to the n, leading coefficient tells us whether where our beginning and end is going to be. So an odd degree will tell us that we're going to start high and end high. I'm sorry, start low and then end high. If we have a negative leading coefficient, we are going to start high and end low. I don't know if I've got my left and rights straight. Um, but if it's an even uh, degree and we have a positive leading coefficient, they're both going to end up just like a regular quadratic. If we, our leading coefficient is negative, they're both going to end down. Really, I just imagine this being translated down to here. And it's just going to follow that same pattern for odd and even. Linear being odd and quadratic being even. And that's it for today. I know it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of vocabulary, but I'm kind of saying the same thing over and over again. Degree, multiplicity, just talking about exponents. Zero, solution, roots, x-intercepts. I don't remember the fifth one, but those are all the same thing. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.